super guy here. I want to share with you um, today, as you see on your screen, how to locate and order fractions and mix numbers on a number line. Why would this be important? Um, eventually, you need to know the value of a fraction or a mixed number, which is greater and which is smaller, and how to put them in the correct order. So we're going to start that now. Um, and you see a number line here, you see some mixed numbers, you see some negative improper fractions, and we're going to deal with all that in today's lesson. First, let's look at our the questions we want to answer. How do we locate fractions and mixed, number, mixed numbers on a number line? And how do we put fractions and mixed numbers in the correct order? Because the value does matter. So let us locate all of these, first of all, on a number line. So let me draw a line. Let me get out my handy dandy line. We'll make our line yellow. And let's start with this line here. I'll bring it down here. All right, so how do we locate? The, the easiest thing to do, let's just start with the low hanging fruit, the easiest uh, ones we can see. So I'm just gonna put, let's see, what's the range we're dealing with here? We're dealing with all positive numbers, so I don't have to put a zero in the middle. So I'll put a zero about right here. And it looks like it goes up as high as five, three, and maybe, yeah, it has five. So we'll put like six here just to, show, just to be sure. All right, so now I want to start to identify. Start with the low hanging fruit, right? So we got zero, one, two, three, four, five, and six. Um, one, two, three, four, five. So this should be pretty easy, right? Five is right there. Check, got that done. And three, um, pretty easy. Um, we're done with that. Matter of fact, I'm just gonna cross those out. Now the next easier ones is, let's start with the mixed numbers. So the ones with a whole number in front of the fraction, like this one, because I know where to start at least. I know it's three plus a little bit more in the fraction, three and one third. So I would need to find out what that one third is. I need to divide the space in between three and four um, into thirds. So I know I'm gonna have a middle. One, no, that's not right. It's gonna be here, here, three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's gonna be one third, three and one third here, two thirds, and three thirds. Three thirds are gonna be a whole thing. So that's gonna give us the next whole number. So here's the space that I'm looking for. And actually I should have drew it that way. No, I'll keep it this way. So we'll do three and one third has to be here. Bam. Cause it's three and a little bit more at the one third. It's not quite half. Um, Cause that's 0.333 as a decimal. So it should be right, right there. All right, so we deal with that one. Um, the next easiest one to deal with, so let me cross this out. Got that one, got that one. Um, actually, maybe not too much crossing now because you might still want to look at that. Um, but I did this one. The next easiest one is are the proper fractions. So the proper fraction, if you remember, are which ones? Those are the ones with the numerator that's less than the denominator. So we're going to go next to my one-fifth, four-fifths, and think that's it. So one fifth, I know just as a fraction, if it's proper and that's that numerator is less than the denominator, it's going to be between zero and one. So we're taking some uh, unit and dividing into five pieces and we're taking one fifth of that piece. So we're going to take zero to one. Let's see if I can get, that's pretty good. So I know that each one of these is one fifth, two fifths, Three fifths, four fifths. And why don't I draw five fifths? Well, five fifths means I just go to the whole next whole number. So five fifths is one. So we're, we don't have to draw five fifths. So finding this one fifth becomes easy if I divide the space in between zero and one um, and just make it uh, divide into uh, fifths and just take the first fifth, one fifth. So that's that. And what about four fifths? Four fifths becomes easy too because they were both divided into fifths and it's right there. Now we're left with these guys here. 
And where is eight thirds? So this is tough. We talked about drawing it as a model in circles, but now how do I figure out where it is? The easiest thing to do to locate this one is to convert it into a mixed number, which we talked about in the previous lesson. Please see that lesson if you're struggling with that idea. So eight divided by three is what we're thinking about. So what is eight divided by three? Well, three goes into the twice, six, eight minus six is two. So this is actually going to equal two from this top one and two thirds, two and two thirds. So I know it's going to be um, between two and a little bit something else. So I'm going to break this down into thirds. There is two and one third and two and two thirds. And this is two and two thirds is what I'm looking for. So I'm going right there for that one. Um, seven fourths. I'm tired of that color. Let's get a different color. Seven fourths. Let's convert that seven divided by four. Goes in there once. And we're left with three. That's one and three fourths. So it's after one. Um, so let me make sure I write that one and three fourths. So between one and two. So we're going to break this into fourths. Um, looks like I need three lines. One, two, three. Because this would be one fourth, two fourths, and three fourths. That's a four. Looks like a nine, but it's a four. All right, so that's how we would do that one. So we want one and three fourths, and I'm going to draw my arrow choop, right there. My last one is nine over two. Looks kind of messy, but hopefully you're following along. So nine over two. Um, let's use this space right here. Nine divided by two is the same thing as two goes into nine four times. That gives me eight, and I only have a remainder of one. So that's four and one half. Four and one half. So I'm I'm, I'm going to break between four and five into halves, and that's pretty easy. It's right there. So there's my one half marker because this is a half mark. And that's how you would put those in order. So locate, let us locate them. Well, we had to put it in order, but now we can see the order if we just go from left to right. It starts here, one, two, three, and so on. You can just number these as you go across, and you have your order. Um, did I miss anything? Seven, four, nine, nope. Looks like I got them all, like Pokemon. All right, let's practice this one. So I, I would love for you to pause it here and you will try to work this one yourself. The easiest um, thing to do is make sure you get the whole range, right? So we want to go from at least zero um, because we don't have any negative numbers and all the way up to at least four. And what is this going to be? Um, yeah, four and one fifth, so at least five or six. So we get everything covered. So start there, please. I'm going to go ahead and start mine. And I'm going to make this pretty wide. So the numbers don't cram together. I'm starting with zero over here because I noticed I don't have any. Um, I will go to five. So that leaves me with three in the middle. One, two, four. Yeah. One, two, three, four. One. Trying to spread this out as much as I can. Two, three, four. All right, that's going to have to work. So let's start with our low hanging fruit. The easiest ones is this mixed number because it already told us a four right here. Now we just need to know it's a little bit more than four. We divide this into fifths, which means we're going to have four lines one, two, three, four. So it would be like one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, that'll work. It doesn't look too pretty to me, so I'm going to try that again. Um, yeah, I think that's a little bit better. So now I have one fifth, one fifth, two fifths, three fifths, and four fifths. And why don't I drive five fifths? Because this is five fifths. That's another whole number that's going up to five. So I only need these that I've drawn. And now to find four one fifth becomes pretty easy. I can draw my line to right there. Bam. Check that off. 
The next easiest one is let's do the proper fractions, which means the numerator is less than the denominator. And so I'm gonna start with my three fourths. That's the only one left, wow. And there's no whole number in there, so I know this is between zero and one. And we're gonna divide this one into threes. That's pretty easy, you draw the one in the middle. So this is one fourth, this is half, two fourths, and there's three fourths. And draw my arrow. There it is. All right, now we got the improper fractions left and it looks like they're divided. Okay, let's just do this one. So four divided by three to get our mixed number will be one up there, one times three is three, four minus three is one. So this gives us one and one third. So we need one and we're going to get one third out of it. Um, so that means I need two. So this is one third, two thirds, and there's my three thirds. So this whole space is a third, a two thirds, three thirds. Four thirds, um, one and one third is pretty easy to find now because it's right here, it's that first one third. One third right there. Now five thirds becomes not too tough to find. I mean, we know this, I mean, I know what it is. Um, three times one, one and two thirds. So we knew we just added one more third. So that's one and two thirds. So that's right, smickety smack right there. Our last one's gonna be seven over two. I'm gonna change that. So what is seven over two the equivalent to? Seven divided by two, seven divided by two. That is not looking pretty. Seven divided by two. Two goes into seven three times. Seven minus six is one. And that leaves me three and one half. And that should be pretty easy to write or find because this one half is just right here in the middle. So this is my halfway mark. And I draw my arrow and bam, I'm done. All right, so this next one, as you just saw, is gonna include some other integers that are less than zero. So we gotta be careful of this one because um, negative numbers tend to confuse some students because it works under opposite rules. And what I mean by that, is you would think as a number gets bigger, the value gets bigger. But for negative values, it's the opposite. You, you, the more, the, the bigger the number, the less of the value, because you're losing more. So let's look at the range here. We're going from negative one fourth to negative five thirds. So let's start at a negative um, three. Start at negative three, and we'll go all the way up to two. So that's pretty good range there. Um, so that means zero should be somewhere over here. There's one. Here's negative one, here's negative two. Hey, that's pretty good. Okay, it's not perfect, but you get the idea. Start with low hanging fruit. Let's get the easy stuff out the way. Uh, one and one third, it's probably the easiest one. One and one third. So here's my one, and we know it's gonna be a little bit more than that, so I break this into thirds. See, one, two, three thirds. So this is my first one third, and there it is. Bam. Um, the next is one fourth, and proper, it's a proper fraction. One divided by four is 0.25, but if you don't know that, you will break this into, let me erase this for a second. No, 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 I, I'll just use a different color. So I'm gonna break this into fourths, but using a different color. So I need three lines. Ooh, you know what, forget that. Um, I don't wanna confuse you, so I'm just gonna draw a new line and make sure you understand where this is gonna be. Because we really gotta focus in on this one. So one fourth is between uh, zero and one. And we know we're gonna break it into fours. I need three lines. That is not good. Bam, 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 there we go. So this is one fourth. Two fourths and three fourths. So if I had the space down here between um, 
oh, I, I, I needed to use this one. What am I doing? But anyhow, um, this makes it even more clear. So it'd be right there. So I could have used this space here. Um, let's go ahead and do that since I didn't think about that. So it's right there. It's also right here, this first one fourth. Um, check, check, and negative one fourth. Negative one fourth, let's divide behind. Now I get my positives out the way. Five over two. Five divided by two. Um, that's four. Leaves me with one. So this as a mixed number would be two. This is equal to two and one half. So two, I didn't draw enough space. I thought I did. So two and one half is going to be, uh, let's say there was a three right here. We'll pay make that a half. So that'll be my two on half right there. Bam. Let's do our negatives. Negative one fourth. So I were, it's between zero and negative one. And I'm going to break that into four sections. And I'm going to take this first one is negative one fourth. And then it's negative two fourths, negative three fourths, negative one. So actually, as it goes to the left, the value seems to get bigger, but it's not because it's negative. I'm going to put that negative right there. And negative 5 halves is going to be equal to negative 2 and 1 half. So here's my negative 2, but a little bit less than. We're not going to say more than, but a little bit less than. Um, so my half is right here. Right there. All right. So let's put these in order. Um, order each of the following pairs of numbers using less than or greater than sign. Which one is bigger? So I'm going to quickly sketch a line. Might have to sketch a few lines, um, but we'll see. So negative 23 and negative 1. So we just talked about that. If this is 0, negative 1 starts here, and negative 23 is even further this way, making negative 23 less than um, negative 1. Negative 1 is greater than negative 3. What about negative 3, 12? Same idea. So if I had, oh no, I didn't want to do that. So if I had, instead of these numbers, I used um, negative 3, 12, and negative 3. So negative 3 is a lot bigger, a lot bigger than negative 3, 12. Would you rather lose negative, would you rather lose $300 or $3? So definitely negative 3 is bigger. Um, negative 37, negative 38. Same idea, and this is just, I just want to draw home that these negatives don't work the same way as the positive. So negative 37, let's say it'd be right here, negative 37 and negative 38. Obviously this is bigger because we increase to the right, so this, uh, I almost did it wrong. This one must be bigger. Negative 37 is greater. Negative 2. Is going to be greater than negative 16. Negative 2 be here, and negative 16 will be somewhere right here. So it's closer to 0, closer to the positive end. And did we accomplish our goal? Yes, we did. What was our goal? Let's go back to it. Um, how do we locate fractions and mixed numbers on a number line? We talked about how to locate them on a number line if you put them in the right order. Sometimes if it's an improper fraction, you need to turn it into the mixed number to see it better. And how do we put fractions and mixed numbers in the correct order? Um, using that number line, um, once we plotted them, we saw what order they were in. So that helped out tremendously. My name is Brandon Clayton, the Algebra Guy, and thank you for tuning in, and I will see you next lesson.